بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله جميعا uh, continuing on in our study of نصيحة for the adv- the advice uh, for the youth of Ahl Sunnah and we're in the ninth point uh, we left off in the where the statement uh, the Sheikh was talking about the discord, uh, of course, between Ahl Sunnah and that this treatise was written for to be a medicine for discord between Ahl Sunnah and that you should not have tried to apply it to Ahl Bid'ah, that there's a different Ahkam. And he's about to make uh, clarify that for us. He says, it is imperative, though, not to confuse the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and how their mistakes should be dealt with, the clarification of which has already proceeded, with the ulama of Ahl Bid'ah, those whom it is obligatory for us to separate from, boycott, and warn against. This is due to the fact that the mistakes of the ulama from Ahl Sunnah are based upon their diligence in seeking the truth, coupled with the following of the correct methodology and etiquettes when it comes to textual deductions. Contrary to the mistakes of Ahl Bid'ah, which are founded upon and the result of following their desires and abandoning the correct methodology and the proper etiquettes as it relates to textual deduct- deductions and extractions. So here the Sheikh is, is making it very, very clear. The reason he wrote this book and that there is a we must distinguish and there's a difference between how Ahl Sunnah deals with Ahl Sunnah in making mistakes and the way Ahl Sunnah deals with Ahl Bid'ah when it comes to making mistakes. And that uh, when you're talking about the ulama from Ahl Sunnah, or a student of knowledge even from Ahl Sunnah, or whatever the case may be, is that this is a person whose foundation, their usul, their creed, their aqidah, and, and their minhaj, their methodology, is the madhab of the salaf is the creed that was espoused by Ahl Hadith, is the creed that was propagated and comes from, as a masdar, uh, the, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. That this is where that's coming from. That's the usul. That's the foundation. And then perhaps this individual, this alim, this student of knowledge, this da'i, this imam, this person from Ahl Sunnah made a mistake. Okay, that's a big difference because their whole foundation is the foundation of Ahl Sunnah, but they made a mistake on the tariq, as Imam Barbahari Bar- Bar- mentions in his treatise, Shara Sunnah. And this is different than the person from Ahl Bidda who's usul, their foundation. For example, when we talk about some of the, the, uh, the du'at and, and individuals from Ahl Bidda, whose foundation, the way they deduce, the way they look at the text, like for example, many of the people who are Diobandis, Naqshbandis, uh, and others, and other Sufi uh, 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 you know, paths, that they their foundation of how they understand Islam and how they approach the text, how they look at the ayat, uh, the ayat is, is different than the way of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah, in general, compared to those groups, is much more literal in their understanding of the text. Whereas you find those groups are very metaphorical and they use, uh, so that means their whole methodology, their whole menhaj, when we're talking about menhaj and, and methodology of approaching the text and of looking at the text is different. And this is what the Sheikh is, ta- Sheikh is talking about, that there's a difference in the way their usul and how they even approach Islam aslan. Okay? The, the, so when you uh, have a discussion with someone who is an Ashari, for example, and it, and it comes to the things of al-asma'i wa sifat, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine names and attributes of Allah, Allah azza wa jal, that you'll see a difference in the way they understand uh, the sifat and the text of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will make that wheel to fit their intellectual capacity uh, in order to go against what they believe is making a resemblance between Allah and the creation. And we negate the resemblance. However, Ahl Sunnah takes a much more literal approach and says, hey, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is still Allah Arsh, he rose above his throne, then we say he rose above his throne. We're not going to debate that. 
We're going to say what Allah said in his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's a different menhaj, it's a different methodology. Whereas they say, no, we have to change, we have to look at different ways to interpret those texts. We need to reinterpret so that way we don't make a resemblance between the creation and the creator. Okay? So you see there's a different methodology. There's a different way of approaching the ayat. They're, they don't, they say that ar-Rahman ala ar stowa as far as they read the ayat. They read the ayat and they they believe it, but they give it a different meaning. They make ta'wil. And then the other sects and their other various ways of deviating from the path of Ahl Sunnah. So that shows that there's a different methodology in Minhaj between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bidah and the way they approach the, the text. And so their reference point is different. Their reference point and how they understand the reference of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is different. So with that being the case, there is a difference in how you deal with someone who's a soul, their whole foundation is, is not even the same foundation as Ahla Hadith and Ahla Athar and Ahla Sunnah and Ahla uh, and the Salaf al-Saleh and so on and so forth. Their usul is going against that usul. So you, you deal with them differently compared to someone who has the same usul, but yet they made a mistake. All mistakes we we don't accept, we don't follow, and should be highlighted. But the way you deal with the individual uh, is is uh, difference and comes into play. And this is what the adilla, the evidence shows us from the uh, the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the minhaj of the Salaf al-Sadiq. So the Shaykh, he mentions, then, he says, this is due to the fact that the mistakes of the ulama from Ahl Sunnah are based upon their diligence in seeking the truth, coupled with following the correct methodology and etiquettes, as we mentioned. Then he goes on to say, he said, the distinction between the two has to be defined. It has to be defined. This is the sole contrast between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bidah. And by this, it will become clear to the intelligent person why some of the imams from Ahl Sunnah who have erred by agreeing with some of the opinions of the people of uh, Bidah in a few specific issues were not considered to be innovators. That is so imperative to understand. And I don't know why, or we see many mistakes, unfortunately, by a lot of the youth and others, some people who are not youth and who even have uh, a degree of knowledge and so forth. They don't seem to implement that there's a difference between how you deal with Ahl Sunnah and how you deal with the mistakes of Ahl Bidah. And that the fact that the history of Islam, because we're imperfect as human beings, and the Prophet Wasallam said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayra khata tawabun, all the children of Adam uh, commit sins, you know, and make mistakes, but the best of those who mistake, make mistakes and commit sins are those who repent, letting us know that we all make mistakes. And with that being the case, that even the great imams of the Sunnah, I could point to you, you could mention any of the imams of the Sunnah, even we talk about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and a lot of people say the Salafis blind follow Shaykh al-Islam, and this and that and the other. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he had mistakes. One of the mistakes that is known, and it seems that this was the view of uh, Ibn al-Qayyim as well, regarding uh, the hellfire, that it would be, uh, that it would end. You know, that it would... Uh, uh, end with time or, or something similar to this. This was a view of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. We don't follow that. We don't say, yes, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, because he was Shaykh al-Islam, you know, we just say that that's the haq. No. You know, kullu yusibu yukhti. As Imam Malik said, everyone gets uh, something correct and something wrong illa sahiba hadha qabr. Kama qal. He said, except for the, the inhabitant of the of that grave. And he was talking about the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So it shows us, Ahabit Fillah, that even the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, there are many great Imams, or probably there's none that have not made a mistake, but there are some that even had mistakes that was in accordance with uh, the people of desires, but it wasn't through their desires. Meaning that they... This is perhaps the environment they were raised in. Their ulama were Ashari, for example, with regards to Sifat. But everything else or most their other principles of Aqidah were in place. And some examples would be Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, the, the, the explainer of, uh, of uh, Sahih, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Fat al-Bari, 
great imam. We regard him as a great imam of Ahlus Sunnah. However, he had a lot of Ashadi. Some will just call him plain and simple the Ashadi. But he had many. He had some issues with regarding sifat, ta'wila sifat, and uh, and some other issues. Likewise, what household doesn't have the books of Imam Anawi? Imam Anawi, great Imam of Ahl Sunnah, but he had some Ashadi uh, Aqidah in some issues and, and so on and so forth. So there are many Imams, great Imams of the Sunnah, who are not declared to be innovators and taken off the Sunnah, even if they had some fallen into some innovation. And that lets us know a very important qa'i that we're going to mention. Please take this qa'ida, write it down. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned the qa'ida uh, regarding takfir, which is that kullu, laysa kullu men uh, yaqa'a fi kufr yukun kafir, o kama qal, o kama qil. That everyone who does an act of disbelief is not a disbeliever. Likewise, the same principle ap applies to everyone who does an act of innovation is not an innovator. That's what's imperative. And that's a difference in understanding with some of the, uh, the people uh, in the past and especially in the presence, the Hadadi and others who are severe in making Tibdi of people. And, 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 and it, there's a likeness with the Khawarij when you make this principle that everyone who's, every time they made a mistake or an innovation, khalas, they're mubtadi'a. No. You know, this mas'ala is a much more, a much more, uh, uh, requires much more um, investigation and tafsilat, you know, and, and, uh, and explanation and looking into the details uh, when regards to making a hukum on an, on a person for innovation. So you can have a scholar from Ahl Sunnah who makes a mistake, even makes a bid'ah, you know, comes up with some new principle, and you're like, whoa, where did the sheikh come up with this from? And someone will refute him, and inshallah, hopefully he will correct himself. Or it may take time for him to correct, because he thinks that this is what the adilla shows him. So that doesn't make him an innovator. But if he continues on innovation, propagating it, and supporting it after some time and without any evidence or it's an issue of his desires, then, then the ulama will make a judgment upon that individual as being an innovator. So it's very important to understand and distinguish between mistakes of Ahl Bid'ah and mistakes of Ahl Sunnah. The Sheikh then mentioned the 10th point. <coughs> and he said, and the 10th point is actually beginning the beginning of the end of the treaties. So he says, I will end this piece of advice with some precious benefits which I see. That by acting upon them will result in a tremendous reward, merit, and will raise one in the ranks of virtue with Allah. I call my brothers to carefully consider them and to act upon them, especially in these times in which fitna and hawa, meaning desires, have become widespread and ignorant, uh, and ignorance has become dominant and prevalent, except with those whom Allah has mercy upon. And that's a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal, showing that the hadayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah favors some people with knowledge and fiqh fi deen, understanding of the religion and correct practice and correct propagation, whereas others may not be favored in that same light. So uh, the Sheikh is beginning to, uh, this is the beginning of the end of the treaties, and he's, he's ending it with some pieces of advice, and I think we'll say that these uh, advice, this advice, uh, which is a series of advices, uh, which is about seven, uh, seven, uh, principles that he's giving, or seven pieces of advice, if you will, and we'll save that for the uh, next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.